What's up there, Workforce? Chris here with work to game and this is the 79 Dungeon Mount Golg. The story is built up to this point, so this is incredibly visually impressive. Uh, there's a lot of very hard to see mechanics if you struggle with like the yellow on the white, so just be aware of that later in the dungeon. Uh, as we fight our big lion friend here, Rake is going to be your tank buster. Never be in front of this boss if you can avoid it. Infinitum is going to shoot a laser beam. Just don't be in front of him. Um, other than that, there's only really one mechanic you have to worry about. Cyclone Wing is just a group AoE no big deal uh, and Typhoon Wing is the one you need to worry about he shows you where the cones are gonna be just don't be in those cones he's then later going to do cones and he's gonna drop orbs in it and you'll see I run way out of my way to show just how easy it is to like get out into that big safe space and then get back in uh, and that's it so we get our 418 loot we go clear through the trash as you're pulling trash just be careful not to pull too much at once because there are these big walls and when you get the wall on its own it's no big deal you just dodge its aoe's but when you double and triple pull into it it gets a little more hectic as we learned uh, so just be aware of what your group may or may not be comfortable with now we get to our big dice guy here uh, and we this is a really straightforward fight. You do not have to be this close. I'm just comfortable tanking this close. Um, his hitbox is enormous for melee DPS that maybe find it more comfortable to dodge things on that tic-tac-toe grid. So he's going to basically roll himself into a new tic-tac-toe shape, and then he's going to cast... Um, He's basically going to cast these beams of light with X Genesis that are going to light up the squares that the faces are on. So just don't be where the faces are. Now that's not hard on its own, but it gets a little trickier after he brings out his orbs uh, and... With with this, you want to stand in kind of the Venn diagram of the orb that's safe, uh, but then also not get hit by that. And the rest of this is a pretty straightforward boss through and through. So just keep not getting hit by things, and this one went down fairly easy. Um, so we progress on through some incredible trash, uh, but, but there are really no intriguing mechanics. It's just beautiful, and it's astounding to be here. Um, there is a really neat little mini boss. This is something that you may remember from Stormblood. If, if you don't remember all the Stormblood raid bosses, um, there is kind of this wind boss here. You've got some orbs that are shooting out lines. Don't be caught in those. He's going to lift a hand or he's going to lift a hand. Don't be under that hand. So I show that coming from a couple of different directions. Just don't be on that side of the map while also not getting hit by the orbs. And this should go down fairly straightforward. Uh, and we can progress on to our final boss. Now, our final boss here is really hard to see mechanics. So some of the AoE is not avoidable. Some of the AoE healers expect your party to not avoid it. Obscenity here, um, she she basically does a handful of mechanics. She shows them all to you, and then she starts to overlap them. So Fortismo is going to be your unavoidable group AoE. It's just raw damage straight out. Um, but some of these other ones upcoming, like uh, Demuendo, you can avoid that. Just don't stand in bad. That seems really easy when it's on its own, but now you want to not just be anywhere out there. You want to be right on the edge of that because at the last second, she's going to put additional circles out there. So you want to be on the edge of Demuendo. Uh, Marcatado, you want to also not be standing in the diagonal laser beams like I just was there. And then uh, Planismo um, is her basically sending us into a phase where these things are going to start overlapping. So just be aware of that. Marionette, she's going to basically um, kind of just blast off and she's going to drop down all these little girls pay attention to which one is lit up you'll see that i just run away from them and stand where i think is safe but one of them is lit up i'm going to slow it down here and you'll see that she actually also does the blade so i need to be over where my party is if i don't want to get hit or i need to pop defensives it doesn't hit that bad on its own especially if you're a tank is is being caught tanking somewhere separate but just be aware of that uh, so you can see this one's glowing here and so that shows us which one is going to kind of have the center of things and there's all sorts of lasers going out um, so just be really aware of, of just how much is going out now this is a very avoidable one you're gonna see see this gap here that I'm kind of running around in that's your timing gap so that'll show you which one is safe and then you can go ahead and move out of the way that's a easy to avoid phase and then you'll see she goes back into this and it's once again the very same things um, this time I, I do a better job of making sure that I'm not taking all kinds of damage um, but that's it, guys. It's an incredible dungeon. The last one, I'm just telling you, it doesn't matter how good you are, your party is going to get hit by damage. So just be aware of that, healers. It's 100% healable. My name is Chris with work to game I hope you guys enjoy this dungeon. Prepare for a lot of cutscenes uh, for the remainder of 79. There is one more. There is a trial um, coming up, and then you are off to the races. It is an incredible amount of cutscenes, so strap in and enjoy. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.